Hey, what's happening? This is Phil from Violence, and you're watching Loudwire. Kiss was the band that made me want to be a performer, but it was definitely Angus Young that made me want to play guitar. You felt uh, all of Angus's emotions, and you felt when he was pissed, or if he was happy, or drunk, or horny, you heard it all from Angus and his fingertips, and you know, I, I loved that he was able to just emote, just take hold a single note. You, you just, you just felt Angus, and I dug that so much. And those, uh, I think one of the earlier, you know, tunes that I learned how to play was. My buddy Dave Colberhouse had the little ghetto blaster because that's all we could afford back in the day, the little single tape desk and took like four A batteries and we pumped that. Just the beginning, just the intro. Oi, oi, oi. Just that beginning part. Uh, one of the earlier songs, once I developed, developed how to play bar chords, and, but I think the first riff that I... Uh, learned was, uh, I think it's a Sabbath song in The Warning. It's a part where, uh, it's kind of a jammy part. And Tony does a. So I think that was the part that I first was able to connect with, moving some spots around. And then uh, another earlier one was, uh, right when the Van Halen one came out was. And you could always know if you were on time because we wouldn't play the chuckas, but we'd hear the record go. Chuk, chuk. Chuk, chuk. You hear Eddie in the background, so. You know, there was always. Ted Nugent was a favorite. Uh, you know, Stranglehold, and um, I think hearing Aerosmith was a little bit. If they weren't, their their songs weren't too easy. You know, you you couldn't just bust into a fucking, couldn't just bust into a Dream On right off the bat. Um, Mama Ken was kind of easy, uh, so you could jam along with that, but um, I loved the first Sabotage record was cool. Um, they had a song called Holocaust, which was awesome. Wait, wait. And Chris Oliva, the guitar player, used a lot of octaves. And I loved that, and I incorporated a lot of that in my, in a lot of my playing. Um, so loved early Sabotage, and Chris was really influential. Um, kind of loved The Merciful Fate when it came out. I think that the, the playing was a little more advanced um, than I was kind of maybe doing at that time, or I was more into more knuckle dragon, um, but it, but when I saw Slayer for the first time, it changed a lot of shit. First, the, I was, you know, I'm not a big smoker, but I was in high school at the time, and I had driven my parents' van, and uh, I smoked some hash before I went and saw my favorite band, Lost Rocket, at the time play, and then the theme from Halloween goes on, and these guys start walking by, because the b backstage was apart from the stage and and there's green lights on and and I hear these you know this rustle of metal going by and these guys had nails coming off their thing and they're wearing makeup and and uh, the thing from Halloween comes on and, you know and and then they bust into And the scream, ah, I was hooked. I'm like, oh, these guys really playing this fast or am I just stoned? You know, one of my first shows ever was seeing uh, Randy Rhodes and Ozzy 
Blizzard of Oz on Dan the Green. So, and those aren't easy songs to learn either. But uh, learning the. <laughs> You know, learning that on the crazy train. Learning those staples, but those were f***ing, you just weren't busting into f***ing. Not at that age, weren't playing the Randy leads. Maybe the, uh, the part in, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of the flying high lead, but those are hard tunes. I started writing music um, when I was 15. Um, I had a band with, uh, I was in a band with Zetro from Exodus and his brother and my high school buddies, Donnie Spear and Danny Cunningham, who are now in my, Mer in my cover band, The Merkins. All of my high school buddies are back together. But uh, I think the first song I ever wrote the riff was, uh, it was called Back to You. I wrote the lyrics and everything. Cause I'm back. Back to you. Cause I'm back. Back to you, girl. I don't think he said girl, but Zep was singing, he was singing and, uh, he was singing in this falsetto like Jeff Tate back in the day and yeah, super high falsetto. And so the hit, the hit was answer the phone, answer the phone. Answer the phone, answer the phone, answer the phone because I can't get over you. Answer the phone, answer the phone, answer the phone because I can't get over you. On parole. Joined a band called Death Penalty my senior year in high school, and uh, they were local, local rebels, local outcasts. We were writing, you know, we started writing some fast stuff, and uh, I think one of the songs that didn't end up becoming a violent song was called "The End" or something like that. And it went. Is that it? And they had this, this style of. You know, uh, just bludgeoning stops. And I, I started writing songs for them. We changed our name to Violence. Um, the first song I wrote for them was a song called Knocking on Death's Door. And I had this big idea for a big intro. Big intro, right? And then my first, I think the first fast riff that I ever wrote was. That became Serial Killer. Uh, I wrote Killing Command for the band. Um, which was more of the... More of the, their style. Um, but I think when I wrote Eternal Nightmare, um, I stole the beginning from the Black Sabbath song called Falling Off the Edge of the World. Separate tune. And uh, it had a riff in it that a lot of people have borrowed, <laughs> but it's one of the, the, the riffs that people always say, man, that, that riff is, you know, that's the riff that people like the, the most from. And it goes... Uh... So that one, you know, I got more into some arpeggiated stuff, uh, going, um, 
Officer Nice was pretty busy, um, got into some... Some choppy picking and... Uh... Writing riffs. You know, in uptuned, it's a lot different than writing in the down tuning, where everything kind of gets thrown off. There was a solo on a Machine Head record that uh, got changed. I played this open ended. Open like that, but the, the key changed to so the open pedaling note changed too. So I had to change it to. That one, the Halo one, Violence Riff, Kill on Command, this is one of my favorites. There's those Chris Oliva octaves. 